Welcome, everyone. My name is Dr. Gary Severance with Henry Schein, and I'll be your moderator for tonight. I'm very excited to welcome Dr. Brett Titanser as our speaker tonight. He'll be walking us through the step-by-step -step digital workflow of the perfect Sarah Crown appointment. I just happened to spend some time with Dr. Titanser this past weekend at DS World 2022, where he presented several times and has amazing information to go over. So I know you'll get a very good information and a great time tonight. Also, if you wanted to chat amongst yourselves or share uh, chatting with presenters as well as attendees, you can click the icon at the bottom of the screen just to the left of the clipboard and that'll open the attendee chat. Before we get started, I'd like to take a moment to go over some housekeeping. We would like questions provided during the program. So if anything's pertinent, we can have Dr. Titanser address it immediately, or we'll have questions answered at the end. <clears throat> this webinar is sponsored by Densply Serona, and Henry Schein is not offering CE credit for viewing or attending this presentation live or on demand. Dr. Titanser, welcome. It's great to see you again, and thank you for being with us tonight. I'll pass it over to you now. All right, thank you, Gary. How's everybody doing tonight? Welcome to the webinar, The Perfect Sarah Crown. I'm excited to be with you guys. So there are some pros and cons of, of these webinars, right? To, to do things from the comfort of our home or office or phone, um, which is really nice. Um, I do miss the interaction of a live uh, seminar or a live presentation. So to kind of make up for that, I, I welcome questions. I welcome the attendee chat. In fact, if anybody, we can all practice. If you guys want to get on the attendee chat and just type in where you're from, I'd love to see um, where everybody's coming from. So just that's good practice. I'm here in Dallas, Texas. All right. So if anybody saw, if you look at the attendee chat, you can type in there. Um, good way to interact. So feel free to, to start saying that. So, oh, we have a... Gary, oh yeah, there you go, Gary, you're Dallas. So um, feel free to use that at any time. There's also a Q&A portion for specific questions that we can ask, uh, answer at the end or during the presentation. So here we go, we have people coming in from Ohio, Matthew, Greenville, North Carolina, Michigan, San Diego, awesome. Gary, Gary uh, definitely he pointed out how we are starting this before the football games. So thank you for, for being here. Um, definitely hope to uh, make this a good use of your time and we're going to get going. OK, so um, I'm going to switch it over. Gary's going to watch and make sure that as I'm presenting, if there's something that you think sh you should be seeing uh, speak up, I'll be showing slides and I'm also going to be jumping on my Seric machine. So a little bit of back and forth. So if anybody ever sees or if I'm talking about something that you think you should be seeing, speak up and let me know. OK, so I'm going to switch over now to my screen. All right. So the, the perfect share crown appointment, first of all, so I, I'm, I'm Brett Tyne, Dr. Brett Tyne, sir. I practice in north of the DFW airport in a town called Flower Mound. Here's a couple screenshots of my office. You'll notice I'm kind of all in with CEREC. Um, I love the Densply Serona workflow, the ecosystem that there is. We have a Orthophos comb beam CT. I have two prime scans, a CEREC mill, um, two mills in fact. I got the new prime print, which is exciting just recently. Um, so, so you name it, I got it. Uh, drink the Kool-Aid. Uh, kind of a little bit about my background, um, been practicing, really I graduated in 2014 and ever since the beginning I've gotten into digital dentistry. Um, I love the community that it brings. I love the people who are interested in this. You guys are the top notch dentists uh, who are really wanting to give the best to their patients. So aside from practicing, I have been able to uh, present and I teach all the level one CEREC courses for Henry Shine. So new users to this Eric, been doing that for five years and it's a great way to get to know you and uh, kind of seen it all. Even uh, been able to, to teach on some military bases, which has been a highlight. Even the military is adapting this. So if you think about CEREC and the, the workflow it provides with same day dentistry, 
Um, how much does that make sense, especially for people in the military who could be deployed? And But I, I think it's the best way to go, best way to, to treat your patients, to be able to do same-day dentistry. And the technology has gotten so good that um, you can even get these down to an hour, okay? So one of the highlights was teaching at Dentist by Serona. We just wrapped that up this last weekend. Um, anybody who is there, please post in the chat. I would love to know if anybody... Um, was actually at Dense Place Around the World. And if you came to my lecture, uh, this may be a little bit of a repeat uh, or review. So um, stick with me. All right. So when we're looking at the full Dense Place Around ecosystem, sorry, hold on a second. I'm still at my office. Got to mute the cell phone or the phones. Uh, you know, when they all come together and you're looking at the ecosystem, that's when things really, really can sing and and work well uh, from being able to scan and mill and center and fire the, the crown same day. Um, then you combine things like 3D printers and comb beam CTs for implant dentistry. Um, it's really amazing. Tonight, our focus is just on our normal bread and butter dentistry, the, the crown which again, um, we do all sorts of treatment, but what are we doing the most? It's, it's crowns. Um, something that was announced, I just wanna do a quick plug. It's called DS Core. And if anybody's heard of this, so this is a new offering from Dentsply Serona. It's basically, you know, a cloud service that stores all of your comb beam data and your CEREC data to the cloud where you can access it from anywhere. One of the things I use it for, um, which I thought was really neat, here's um, my patient looking at her CT scan on an iPad. So you just go to dscore.com. You can pull up it, their CT scan or their CEREC scan um, from anywhere that someone has internet access, and they can look at that CT scan. Um, pretty, pretty neat. As we're using this for case presentations. We're using this for follow-up. Let's say a patient comes in. And we showed them all this neat technology, 3D scan. You know, before we just send them home with, what, a treatment plan or a bill. But now we get to send them home and, and, and email this CT and, and the scan of their teeth that they can view from home with their significant other when they're deciding to um, go forward with treatment. So really neat what's coming through the pipeline. Um, just for quick disclosures, um, I am... Um, there is an honorarium for this presentation tonight, but I'm not compensated for any material or equipment purchases. Um, you'll probably notice that I am pretty biased towards Densply Serona products. Um, I've used a lot, not to say that I haven't used other, other products, but I just think they have the best workflow out there. And um, so I thank you, thank, thank Densply Serona and Henry Schein for their, their support. And um, I haven't uh, adjusted any images that you see, so the, those are all authentic. If you're on your laptop and you have your phone, you can scan this QR code if you want a copy of the slides that I'll be presenting. So anybody feel free to, I'll give you a few seconds to scan that if you're on the desktop. Um, in the end, I'll give you my kind of contact information that I can email you as well. So I know some people like to have copies of slides. All right, so quick survey. Again, I, I talked to you about uh, live interaction. I, li I like that. So if anybody would feel free to jump on the chat, let me know if anybody owns a digital scanner. And is anybody doing 100% digital impressions, meaning no alginate, no PVS? Um, and if you are scanning digitally, what equipment are you using? Does anybody have a prime scan, a prime mill? Um, anybody have the prime print? So feel free, let's see, feel free to type in the chat if anybody has any of these things or doing any digital dentistry. And I'm gonna kind of keep an eye out for that. All right, so in my, so we have a Prime Scan user, Omnicam. People have the Prime Scan, Prime Mill, awesome. So we definitely have some CEREC users, Prime Scan, Prime Mill. The Sprint Ray, yep, I actually, we I have the Sprint Ray Pro as well, recently upgraded to the Prime Print. iTero, 100% digital impressions, awesome, Adriana. Prime Scan, Prime Mill, good, a lot of lot of Prime. So, so things that I'm gonna show you tonight, you can use tomorrow. 
Um, prime scan, prime mill, three shape, perfect. So in one of my longer presentations, we we're kind of go, going over some of the ROI with Seric Dentistry. You know, there's a lot of advantages that I see, not just return on investment, not just money. Patients love same day dentistry. If anybody's gone from the old way of doing it, where multiple uh, numbing uh, appointments, multiple shots, or temporary that falls off on vacation, to going from that to a same day cram procedure, they just absolutely love it. And um, to me, to me, the offering you give to the patients and the convenience um, is is huge advantage. Um, I also think. Um, the crown procedure with the CERIC can be one of the most productive things we can do in dentistry. I even think it rivals that of dental implants and veneers. So, so in preparation for my presentation in Las Vegas, I, I kind of broke down the costs. Once you look at overhead, time involved, risk management, you know, all of that adds up. So dental implants are, of course, they're, they're hot veneers. We do those, but, but if you look at your return on investment, um, if you can get a crown procedure and do the perfect crown, a crown in an hour from start to finish, it rivals the production of implants, dental implants and veneers, minus all those added risks. So um, I've always heard as a CEREC mentor um, that a one hour crown was possible. And it's kind of been all right with floating, that, floating around. I've heard that for a long time. But, you know, the question is, can it be done? Can it really be done? And so, so when I was thinking that, I've been a CERC for user for, for a while. I've never actually tried that. Has anybody seen Top Gun? Top Gun Maverick? Um, one of my favorite movies, definitely of the year. A lot of people have seen it. So if you haven't seen it, basically the, they come up against an impossible task. They have to finish this route in under a minute and a half going through canyons. They have to take out their target and get out of there before, like I said, in under a minute and a half. And in preparation, the team, uh, the different pilots, they were practicing and they're trying and trying and failing. They never could quite get it. And so they're sitting in class in the classroom, depressed, they didn't think it could be done. And sure enough, up on the monitor, they see this jet flying across. And who is that? Of course, it's, it's Tom Cruise. And he's banking, he's turning, and they're all excited because he's under the time. And sure enough, he, he gets in and gets out and, and finishes the impossible task in under the amount of time. And so with that being said, I was inspired. I took my GoPro camera and I got a big clock and I wanted the time to see if a crown could be done from start to finish, no cheating, in under an hour. And spoiler alert, we, we did it. So in order to prove that I'm not lying to you guys, here's the video. Let me know if you can't see it, but see, we have the time. We're gonna do the, do the timer. And so over the next uh, 40 minutes or so, I'm going to go over how we were able to do this, some tips and tricks, hopefully that you can take back and use starting tomorrow in your dental practice so that you too can have that perfect CERC crown appointment and be able to produce beautiful restorations, perfectly fitting restorations, but also in um, a great time that patients can get in and get out with, with their procedures done. So, I'm going to have this playing in the bottom right hand corner while I continue to present. So uh, what I did after is kind of like, okay, football's going on right now. If anybody's in sports, you can watch film. So I went back and I watched my film of the hour, the hour crown appointment and I broke it down and wrote out all the different times on what it took. And so to simplify it here on the top right, you know, that time when they sit down in the dental chair and when they're numbing is such a crucial time. You can use that wisely to prepare for the case. There's a lot of things you can get done ahead of time before you even put a drill to the tooth uh, to move that appointment along um, even faster. 
So, uh, so seven minutes for case pre- preparation. The tooth preparation, that's something I actually suggest to kind of pump the brakes a little bit. Um, a good preparation is so vital in coming out with a nice tear crown. Um, you need to make sure the margins are nice and smooth, that you have enough occlusal clearance. So it's okay to pump the brakes on that. And then for the rest of the procedure, kick on the afterburners and uh, you can get through that pretty quick. Um, you'll see the CERC design on the software, three minutes, all right? The software has gotten so good that gone are the days where you need to sit with multiple tools on the computer trying to adjust it and change it and get it to where um, that crown is something that, that looks good in the spot. It the, the software has gotten so good that the initial proposals are coming out really nice that you shouldn't take a long time on the computer adjusting that crown. Um, so we're going to actually demo that today. Um, as far as the processing goes, um, we are doing for this case, this is the case we're doing on this patient here on the bottom right, we're doing tooth number 19. Um, we're doing a MTL zirconia on the CEREC with the prime mill. Prime mill can do things, uh, can mill zirconia in what's called super fast. So, so mills it in under five minutes. Um, really neat. And then another crucial step. So the processing takes about 30 minutes. The seat. Okay. Crown seats. Um, who loves adjusting crowns? Occlusion, interproximal context. I, I, that's the bane of my existence, the back and forth tap, tap, taps and making sure things fit. But with the, with this workflow, it's gotten down so good that very rare am I having to adjust these crowns at all. They're seating really nicely the first time with minimal to, to no adjustments uh, very consistently. And, and I can say that um, kind of the first time, I've been a CEREC user for uh, seven, eight years, and um, it always seemed like there, there needed to be some adjusting um, with Emacs and other different materials I think zirconia has an advantage that it's milled larger, 33% larger. So the margins just fit really nice. Um, the uh, cementation, you're not bonding these. So it makes the cementation go quicker. So you can really get crown seated, cement cleaned up, at final x-ray and the patient out in, in five minutes. All right. So each one of those steps, we're going to break down and kind of go over a few tips. All right, so that first three minutes, the blood pressure, all right, um, get the patient in. Um, I want to reiterate, this is a team process. I could not have done this without my team, without my assistants. You can see her down in the bottom right-hand corner. She's sitting there scanning the patient. She's getting things ready. But the anesthesia, um, you know, I love using a really good, strong prescription, num uh, prescription numbing gel. Uh, those things work great. Very rare do I have patients complaining about uh, the pain from an injection. I also use something called Onset. Um, it's from On Pharma. It's a sodium bicarbonate solution. So especially for lower molars where I need that inferior inferior alveolar nerve block, it works good with uh, kicking in the, the anesthetic quicker. So I use, I'll always use that um, for lower blocks. So while the patient is numbing, you got a good five minutes to really use that time wisely. All right, so here's some of the things I recommend uh, doing during that time. This is, this is assistant driven. So one, you gotta make sure you have your pre-op x-rays and photos, okay? So get your PA for insurance. I always take an intraoral photo. So here's the photo in the very middle of my screen. Here's the tooth we're working on. It's a previously treated root canal tooth. Um, Get your intraoral photos for records to send to insurance. And then shade selection. If anybody has experience with zirconia, you'll notice that they are more opaque. So I always step it down a shade. So if a Vita shade guide is an A2, I'll mill uh, the block out of an A3. Okay, so step it down one shade. Um, it still comes out pretty light. Um, but the advantages to zirconia is the strength. It's the minimal prep that you have to do. Um, the cementation is easier. Um, I've been doing Emacs for so long that I never thought I would give, you know, cave 
but I'm really, really, really liking these zirconia. Um, it just predict uh, have such a predictable workflow. The margins fit great. I've been really happy with this material. So you put the, the block in the mill, okay? If you have the prime mill, you can start what's called the touch process. So that way, as soon as you're done designing your crown and you hit start on the mill, it immediately starts milling, okay? So run your start process, take your pre-op scans. So go and the system will go and scan um, the opposing arch. They'll scan the tooth, take the buckle bite, and then she'll just cut out the tooth that we're preparing so that way you have all of your scans already done in the machine, ready to go when the patient's numbing. All right. So second, let's talk about tooth preparation. This is where I said pump the brakes. Uh, this took around 15 minutes from 7 minutes, 30 seconds to 21 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, just a few pointers here. The def definitely the biggest uh, area that people mess up on is a lack of occlusal reduction. So make sure you have enough occlusal reduction. I use these burrs here that you see on the top right-hand uh, portion of my screen. These are depth reduction burrs. Um, there's an item number. So I have one that's a millimeter tall. And what I do is I go and I do a few occlusal swipes. So I get my depth reduction and kind of connect the dots. Um, that way I know I have the clearance I need. The number one reason for fractures down, down the road is a lack of occlusal reduction. With CEREX in particular, and even if you're using a lab, this is very important to have your two-plane axial reduction. So nice and rounded occlusal cuffs, not pointed. Um, I always take a football diamond like you see in the top right-hand picture and make sure all of my cusps are rounded. Get that two-plane axial reduction. And um, even more important with milling, and, and here's why. So if you're milling you and you have a sharp cusp, okay? Let's say that top right-hand picture, you see a real sharp cusp, kind of over-exaggerated, but um, the thing with milling is you have these burrs that are gonna mill out the inside of your crown. Well, if that point, if that cusp tip comes to a point that's thinner than the width of the burr, the burr goes and it over mills that area to make sure your crown will seat. Okay. So one more time, you'll see that diagram. So what you may think is an adequate thickness on your crown, if it over mills that area, you could see it, if you had one millimeter clearance, you get the over milling and all of a sudden a uh, thick crown becomes thin. So make sure that it eliminates that problem if you have like on the lingual cusp in the bottom left, nice rounded cusp so you avoid that over milling. So your margin design, the biggest thing is just really smooth and visible margins. I always go with a red stripe barrel diamond. The very last thing I do, I'll place my first cord. I'll come back with a red stripe barrel diamond and smooth out my margin so they're nice and visible so that the CEREG machine can pick it up really easily. Margin design for zirconia, really you have all options. You could go knife edge, light chamfer, bevel, but you gotta remember we are milling. So a knife edge margin has a chance to chip in the mill. So there's a parameter you can bulk up your margins to survive the mill um, and you mill it with a bulkier margin, you center it in the oven. And then once it comes out centered, that zirconia is strong. You can go back in and then I'll buff the margin so you can thin it out as thin as a knife edge at that point once it's centered. Sometimes I'll even go and cement it in the mouth and then smooth it off in the mouth. Um, just remember that that milling process does have a chance to chip, so make sure you have a thick enough margins to survive that. Gingival retraction is still important, even when digital scanning, uh, it still doesn't know the difference between gum tissue, blood. So um, I like the double cord technique. I'll place a double zero cord first, and then a size one cord over the top. Um, right before we're about to take the final impression with the prime scan, we'll pull the top cord and leaves a nice good separation between gum tissue and tooth. If I'm still having troubles, let's say with hemostasis or bleeding, 
I like to use uh, the lidocaine that has the higher concentration of epinephrine, the 1 to 50K. And if you inject a little bit into the area that's bleeding, right into the papilla, for instance, it causes that vasoconstriction enough for that the few minutes to, to stop the bleeding and you can get that good scan that you need. If that's still not, not cutting it, then you can use a diode laser. I'll pull out my diode laser for real deep margins. And uh, you just still need to cause, get that nice good uh, tooth separation, tooth and tissue separation. So here's, a, here's an example. Okay, so here's, here were three onlays um, that we did in a row. Um, here's with that second cord. You'll wet the cord first, pull the cord, and then dry the preparation so you see a nice good separation between tooth structure and um, gum tissue. All right, so now that you've prepared the tooth, just check in the chat. Now that you've prepared the tooth, um, you're gonna do your prep scan. Now, the assistant has already gone in, done all the scans, they cut out the prep, so literally all you're scanning is the one prep tooth. That should be let that should be a 30 seconds or less scan. Should be super quick. Get in and get out, especially with the prime scan. It picks that those impressions up so well and so quickly that this this should only take a few seconds to, to scan the prep. Um, I always like to position my prime scan behind the patient so that way I can see the screen and the patient at the same time. Um, that way, when I scan, I actually watch the screen. If you see on the top right, I'm looking at the screen. Uh, so I know I'm scanning and picking up the things that I need. Okay, so we've scanned our prep. At this point, we are at the 22 minute and 30 second mark. All right, so um, now we're going to go to the prime skin for our design. So there's a few things that I want to point out to you. Um, we do have time that I can just demo this. Um, I'm going to slow down. So, so you'll see my actual design time in the bottom right hand, the video when we we're doing it live was two minutes and 45 seconds. That's from the time we scanned the prep, moved forward until it got to the mill. It only took two minutes and 45 seconds. Again, the software and the technology has gotten so good, you shouldn't be spending a long time with your crown designs. So I'm going to switch it over here, show you a few pointers and how um, you can achieve that. I actually have that case to show you. No judging on my prep, right? <laughs> but um, we'll go ahead and switch that over. And then as I'm switching, if anybody has questions up to that point, feel free to, now would be a good time to, to ask. All right. So Gary, can you see the uh, prime scan? Yes, I can. Perfect. It looks great. Okay, I'm going to keep the video playing even so you can make sure I'm not cheating here. All right. So here's that case. Here we pre prepared tooth number 19. We're going to do a Sarah zirconia crown. Um, she did have some interproximal decay and things, so so uh, we even had time and we did a buildup. Um First thing is margin, all right? This is something that I can see people taking way too long on. Um, what I like to do first is don't, don't draw your margin like this where it's real far away, you can hardly see it. We'll zoom in, it's a touch screen with the prime scan, zoom in so you can see that prep really nice and big. And then I find a spot where I can see the margin real clear. I'll start double click. And uh, something I see with new users especially is they'll go around the margin like this, kind of clicking one thing at a time. Notice I'm already off. And if you're doing it this way, you'll find like sometimes you can even get into this lasso situation and you're all over the place and you're panicking. Don't do that. All you got to do is right click and it will take you all the way back. But rather than clicking just everything one step at a time, 
I do what's called the do si do, right? I'm from Texas. Remember the do si do? Okay, let me show you what this is. So I find a spot that's real nice and clear. I double click on the margin. I jump to the opposite side of the tooth. I single click and then go right back to that red dot and double click. Okay, notice how that got the margin really quick in just a few clicks. Let me show you that one more time. So I find my margin, double click, jump to the other side of the tooth, single click, and then right back to that red dot, double click. Okay, that got 90% of my margin pretty nice. Okay, now I, all I have to do is just fix a couple of these spots I've noticed. Come here and smooth that out. Come over here. Smooth that out here. And then you got your margin. Should be, again, 30 seconds or less to mark your margins. People take way too long on this. If you're having a hard time finding your margin, then I'll, I'll go back and see what could I have done better uh, on my preparation? Could I have smoothed the margin better? Could I have gotten some better tissue separation? Um, that's the thing that I'm more concerned about than this, this blue line. You should have nice, good margins and they should pick up quick. Okay, so once you've drawn your margins, we're gonna move forward. So with Cerex Zirconia, first thing I do is I come down here before I even start with my design I'm gonna go down here to restoration parameters, all right? For zirconia, I'm not bonding these um, as long as I have enough axial retention. I'm just gonna use a glass ionomer cement or a, just a, your traditional looting cement. So I don't need as big a spacer. So I'll bump my spacer down to 90. Both the radial and the occlusal. Basically, what's this doing over here on this right-hand side, you can see the picture of the diagram. It's providing a little less wiggle room for that crown. So when you go to seat this, it just it probably is one of the reasons why the, these require minimal to no adjustments. Because they seat so nicely, there's, there's little space or little wiggle room as compared to something like an Emacs where you need a little more. Um, could be possibly what, uh, part of the reason as to why they seat so nice with so little adjustments. So I always bump the spacer down to 90. So if you scroll down here, you'll also see that the default for minimal thickness, the occlusal for Cerex Zirconia MTL is only 600 microns. So that's less than, that's 0.6 millimeters. That makes me nervous. Uh, like I said, I like to uh, err on the side of thicker as far as your occlusal clearance goes. So I go ahead and bump this up to 1,000. So basically, I want that one millimeter of, a, of clearance of material thickness, and um, I like that a lot better. And then right here, the default for margin thickness is 100. If you're worried about chipping during the mill, you can bump this up to 110 or 120, and just know once you center it, you can always smooth that back down um, as thin as a knife edge if you'd like. So um, those are the three things, spacer, minimal thickness, occlusal, and just make sure you have enough thickness on your margin. And then we're gonna go back. Notice how it's re-proposing the tooth. So that's why I always do that restoration parameters first. Okay, you don't wanna sit and spend five minutes adjusting your, your crown only to go back and uh, change the parameters and redo it. All right, first thing I do, I look at my fissure height. I want that at a millimeter or more. So right now I'm actually sitting pretty nice. If I wanted a little more thickness on the occlusal, I'll right click. This brings up my tools. I go to the anatomical and I can thicken this up. Okay, just one tool will thicken. Now I have my fissure heights at 121. Okay, next thing I do is I'm gonna work on the contour. So I like to look at it from all different directions. I can even pull up the upper jaw so I can see how that tooth is coming in. These cusps look short. So I'm gonna right click I'm gonna pull up my shape circular tool and I'm gonna just go ahead and bring this cups up. Get a little better coupling in here. I can rotate this around, look at the lingual. 
I'm comparing my lingual cusp now to the adjacent teeth, so I notice that they look a little low. So let me go ahead and bring these cusps up. What I'm looking for is just that the cusps are pretty much in alignment. If I were to draw a line straight through here, everything would be nice and lined up. You can even use tools to show that. There's analyzing tools over here on the right-hand side. If you scroll down to the distance tool, you can actually create a line, a straight line to give you a reference point. So notice I got my cusp heights pretty much right on that line. This one's a little short, so let's bring this up so right to that line. That's using the distance tool to create a nice reference line point. All right. So now that I got my cusp contour where I want it, I'm going to go ahead and look at my occlusion. I know I created some high spots as I was making those adjustments. So let me take those out. I'm using the same circular tool. You want to make that area you grab just a little bit larger than the spot you want to adjust. So you can change the size over here with this bar or you can hold down right click and change the size. So then I'm just going to take these down. I don't like to see any red, of course, and, and no turquoise even. If I have some of the turquoise like, like you see here, I know that's going to be a spot that I'm going to have to adjust in the mouth. And what am I going for? I'm going for that perfect serrate crown, that one hour crown with minimal adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and take these out. So I'm going to move each one of these down. Okay. So once I have my occlusion where I want it, the last step I'll do is flip it upside down and get my interproximal contacts. So with these, I like to have a little bit of green. So I switch to the smooth tool. Again, right click. That's the quickest way to bring up your tools if you right click. Go to the smooth tool. And I'm going to hold down left click and I'm moving this cursor back and forth. And I'm taking out the red. I'm taking out the yellow to the point where I have just a little bit of green. If you want to see it on the actual crown, you can al always go and take off your lower jaw and you can see where your contact's located. And I have this nice, good, broad contact. This even is still a little bit too much green. For me, I like a nice, strong snap with the floss, but not too tight where it's ripping. So I'm going to take out a little more of the green to something like this. Okay, nice broad contact on the distal. On the mesial, notice I have a lot of this noise. And when I was preparing this, I was wondering, hey, what, what happened there? Um, sure enough, if I bring up my lower jaw... I moved my restoration out of the way. I didn't even notice, but this mesial margin, because of that decay, got pretty deep. See where it is in relationship to the gums? But that just shows the power of the prime scan to be able to scan those really deep margins and still have nice, good, clear. Um, this was only using cord. I didn't have to do any uh, laser or anything like that. So pretty neat how that prime scan, I think it's definitely the best scanner, if not the only one that can get deep margins like this. Um, so, so that's what was going on there. So when I'm designing this restoration, I'm not worried about this noise down here because I know that's just gum tissue. But right in my contact area, I got that little bit of green, what you're going for. Okay, so we go, we send it to the mill. My milling unit is off for the day at my office, but we would have the block all ready to go. The touch process is done. So then all we got to do is come here and make sure you select super fast. Okay. If you're on the prime mill, 
Um, if I had that on, you'll see the option to mill it in super fast mode. Uh, the prime mill is the only mill that can do that, where it can mill zirconia in under five minutes. It's, it's amazing um, how it's able to do that. All right, so here I am on the boat on the video. We're 33 minutes, 30 seconds in. Um, looks like I am about ready to send it to the mill myself. We got kind of timed this pretty well. Here's me standing up, and um, we prepared the tooth milling. Notice my my assistant; she's coming. She's pulling up that other cord out, uh, so that way those tissues can settle back down um, and get ready for cementation. So. Here's the design. I'm going to take you around the office. Here's our mill. Notice right now it's going to start in a second. It's about a five minute mill um, to mill out that block. All right. So any questions on the design process so far? If not, I'm going to switch back over to slides here. Brett, Brett there were a couple of questions. Uh, that you yep. can cover here. Do you use zirconia for veneers also? Yeah. So zirconia and veneers, the tough, okay. Zirconia has gotten to the point where it can look really nice in the anterior. I've seen some amazing cases. I've done some cases myself. The, the tough part is, is the bonding. Okay. So if I like to do minimal prep for my veneers, so, so not a lot of reduction of two structure if it's just for a cosmetic case so so zirconia just doesn't bond as well as porcelain so i've been hesitant to do veneers with zirconia so far full coverage crowns absolutely okay i've done plenty of those in the anterior and they can they look great i would definitely wouldn't do it like a single central replacement next, next to natural teeth it'll definitely stand out okay zirconia is more opaque but if you're doing six, eight, ten crowns, for instance, and they're all zirconia, I mean, they can look really, really nice, especially with these like multi-translucency -transluc layered zirconia. Um, it's just tough to bond. Um, so, so as far as super fast mode downsides, okay. So I have seen with other materials. Again, this is what's cool. I'm just a practicing dentist. I have, I've seen this and done this a lot. Um, I've had some restorations break during the mill with, let's say, katana um, for whatever reason. Um, and that, that isn't an every time, I would say one in maybe 20 restorations, especially the thinner it is, it can have a chance to, to break with the super fast because it is going faster. It's doing 100 micron swipes at a time. But with the Ceric MTL, okay, this is a dense Serona material. I'm wondering if it's almost that they tested this more thoroughly than other third-party materials. I can attest that I've yet to have one break during the super fast mill process. Um, I always make sure I have that millimeter thickness. I have the margin set at 100 microns or 1,000 microns so, so, uh, or, or thicker. Um, and I've yet to have one break. So to me, I see zero downside to milling in super fast when it comes to Ceric MTL zirconia. Um, fast mode and stronger blocks like Emacs or Tessera that are thicker, harder for the burrs to mill through. Yeah, you can see some more troubles there, but because zirconia is that softer, more chalky, if anybody's seen that, those blocks, it just cuts it like butter. <laughs> And uh, a very minimal burr. In fact, I've never had a burr break on it. Um, it's just, it's been very, very predictable. And that's one of the biggest reasons I love this new, new material, the MTL zirconia. But those are good questions. Definitely, definitely valid. I'd say I can't say the same for some of the other materials, just from my own experience. So, Brett, do you use super fast for only zirconia? It's only available for zirconia. Okay. The super fast. Um, like if you try to uh, mill Emacs, it doesn't allow you to, it doesn't give you the option to super fast, but you, do, you can do it on fast mode. But any uh, zirconias, you can do it on super fast, but 
like I said, I have unfortunately had some break with Katana. Um, whereas the Seric MTL, I, I've yet to have one. So that's a good point. One of the questions was our Seric rep said not to use the super fast mail mode. And that doctor is using Katana. I'm wondering if that's the case, right? Okay. Because okay. they just probably haven't honed in that workflow. They haven't tested it as much. It's a third party block. I'm sure they'll get there, honestly, because I do. I love the aesthetics of Katana. If I want the most aesthetic looking zirconia, Katana is still the way to go. But um, I'll slow it down. I probably won't do it on super fast just in case you have that burr breaking or the, the, the block breaking. And if it's you're doing a more aesthetic case, you know, this is something I'm doing some hand carving in the lab. So I'm okay not to do these in an hour anyways, right? So um, that may be um, something to consider. Okay. And the next break you have or filler time, uh, they are struggling. One of the group is struggling with getting clear margins with a two-chord technique. And they want to know what yeah. you soak. So maybe you can comment on that so, later. So we soak it in hemodent. Okay. So I always use some kind of hemostatic agent to soak it in. So that way, that first chord that you place is, in fact, I soak both chords in hemodent. So that way you get that extra, um, you know, hemostasis from it. And uh, really packing in um, a double zero. Yeah, that first chord should be small. It needs to get a, all the way into the sulcus. So I use a double zero. And the second one, I use a size one. So it's a little bigger. It pushes the gum tissues away enough to where, um, you know, you got to let it sit for a couple minutes. And one thing I did notice too, is make sure the assistant wets it first before you pull it. Cause sometimes that will dry out and it'll start to stick to the gum tissues. And so if you pull a dry cord, it will rip gum tissue with it. And then again, you just have bleeding all over again. So make sure you're always wet it first, pull the top cord, then go back and dry. And um, that should help. And if you're still having troubles, then pull out the diode laser or that um, better viscosat, the, the 1 to 50K epinephrine lidocaine. Great. But your questions. I, I think you're doing hands-on removing the sprue. So. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Sprue. Let's, let's move to that. So we're showing the sprue removal down here on the bottom right. Moving along, we're getting to the speed fire. So I'm going to switch back to slides. How are we doing on time? All right, we got to speed through this. So milling, um, super fast. Again, um, only the prime mill can do that. It's one of the coolest technologies out there. I just couldn't couldn't practice Seric zirconia without the prime mill. Um, keep your blocks organized here and, and definitely show it off. This is one of the coolest technologies you have in your office. I have this right in the middle of the hallway. I know it's loud sometimes. I don't care because patients ask about it. And they love watching their crowns being made. It's one of the biggest practice sellers I have. And I tell them to bring out their phone, video it, send it to their friends, you name it. So show it off. Sprue removal, that's something you just saw. I'm kind of showing off the prime print down the bottom right, just for fun for anybody who haven't seen it. Prime print's really neat. Different. That'll be the next presentation, Gary. How about that? Um, but uh, I like to carve in a little bit of additional anatomy. I use a red stripe pointed barrel diamond to take off the sprue and carve in a little bit of additional anatomy because um, they come out nice, but but I like to do a little extra so it really can come out looking like you got something from the lab. Um, the speed fire oven, so this takes around 20 minutes. So use that time wisely, all right? This is the one step, it's in the oven. Um, you can go back to the patient, you can finish up their fillings that you had planned, treatment planned on them, you could start the next crown you can go and do your hygiene exams, surf the internet, right? But uh, use that time. So if, if there's ever procedure where I have multiple things, I always wait to do those fillings until the crown is in the oven. And then I, it's almost like a timer for myself. Okay, I know I have 20 minutes to go and finish those fillings by the time my crown is done. Or I have 20 minutes to go do the hygiene exams. Um, so use that time. Once it's out of the oven... Um, we're polishing these. I'm polished only on these zirconias. Uh, they come out so smooth, especially with some polish, that it feels really nice to their tongue. 
I use a polishing kit that you see here with from Meisinger and even some dia shine on there. It, these polish it up in just a matter of minutes. Um, assistants are doing this workflow, by the way. And then as far as seating, okay, I always try it in. I check the inner proximal contacts. I floss, make sure it fits really good. Again, very rare am I adjusting these. And, and this is the first workflow that I can honestly say that I would say 98% of the time, like maybe one out of 20 crowns am I ever having to adjust. It's pretty amazing that uh, they fit. They fit great. So then we cement these. We're not bonding, so it's a really easy cement process. Tack cure, peel the peel the cement, run the floss through, check the bite. But again, it's a very rare, if ever, do I even have to adjust the bite. And then I always end with a final bite wing. And that's the case here, finished on the top right. Um, here's our final bite wing. These fit great. The margins are so nice with zirconia. And here's the final picture. Um, the one thing I'd say I'd change is I could have taken the buckle margin down to the gum line. You can kind of see the transition. She did want it a little lighter, but it is a back molar. The only place she'll be able to see that she puts, pulls her cheek like this with we did with the cheek retractor, but you know, I see it, but um, they, they look great. They fit great. And you can get these done in an hour. Um, love the workflow. If anybody, you know, I'll just wrap up here just with a few deep margin cases. Yes, it can get deep margins. All right. Uh, pretty amazing what this can do now with the technology. And um, I, it's become my go-to material for posterior molars. I just think they're strong. They look great. And you can get them done in an hour. So um, easy to schedule. You're not dealing with temporaries falling off. Patients love it, and it's really made me happy as a dentist and uh, the team as well. The team loves uh, being involved in the whole process. All right, so uh, we, de we definitely we have time for questions here at the end. Um, I'll speed up the video. I got to show the video to make sure that I didn't cheat. Um, let me speed this up. All right, so I've just watching it, oven cook doesn't really do much so we're going to speed this up okay crown's coming down you let it cool off here's me polishing the crown okay here we got four minutes to seat all right i will admit i was i was sweating i didn't want to have to do this twice so um i was really really hoping that we were going to be able to seat it with no adjustments and so here, here we go. We're going to try it in. All right. I'm checking with floss. Assistance holding it down for me. I check both contacts. You get that nice, good pop without uh, shredding. Okay. Sure enough. Fit great. So I take it out. I'm just going to clean that out, dry it. And notice no adjustments. I'm going straight to the cement. All right, pink Reliax for this cement. I'm seeding it. She tack cures it. I'm going to go ahead and peel that cement away. Two minutes, 30 seconds left. Sit her up. We're going to get the final bite wing. And let's see with, here's the final bite wing, minute and 20. You can see me in the mirror kind of anxious, <laughs> but... Uh, sure enough, we get the bite wing, we get the vest off, and we get her out in under an hour. We made it. So um, you can, too, you can do the perfect hair crown, apply some of these principles. Hopefully this was helpful for y'all. Again, um, I'll end with whoever wants to stick around for questions, and um, I'll put up my yep, thumbs up. I'll put up my Instagram kind of link. This is another good way to get in touch. Uh, scan this and uh, send me messages there. And good luck to everybody. All right, Gary, questions? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Dr. Titan, sir, thank you so much. And it's great to have finally a recorded one hour crown and the patient looks very happy. A couple of questions for you, if you would. Yep. Um, go down, they put it in there and... 
so the, you know, this is wonderful. We have a D3 student here asking a question. Yeah, nice. awesome. Are we able to achieve the same strength and aesthetics to that of a conventional lab crown with such a fast workflow? What scenarios would you still choose a lab? Hey, that is a great question. And I'm so happy to see a dental student here. Do you know, this yeah. is, that's where my journey started. I did my first share crowns in dental school. Um, I want, I knew I wanted to get into it and I knew the technology was awesome. So I started taking courses in dental school. So good for you, um, for being here. That's awesome. So can you achieve the same strength and aesthetics of a conventional lab crown? Okay. So, so here's the deal. Most labs are milling these days. Okay. Uh, the workflow for labs works really well. So even labs are doing this same digital workflow. A lot of times they're even scanning PVS impressions that you send in and they'll, they'll do it digital, especially like big labs like Glidewell. So as far as strength, so, so the one I showed you, the CERC MTL zirconia, the thing you need to know about zirconia and almost any material for that matter, there's a scale. You have aesthetics on one side and you have strength on the other. Okay, so you have your like empress, your feldspathic portion that look beautiful, but they're not as strong. Then you have all the way over here on the other side where you get your Bruxer crowns where they're like 1200 megapascals in strength, but they're really opaque and they don't look great. So you're trying to find that happy medium. So Emacs and porcelain crowns are about 500 megapascals. What I showed you today is around 800 megapascals. So not your brucks or not your thousand plus, but I think that's overkill. So this is much stronger than an Emacs and um, was still getting the look. So I think it's a good option. So yes, you can get the strength. As far as aesthetics, one thing I do recommend anybody does is milling. You do have these burrs that mill out the anatomy that are a little thick. So I go in and I carve in some additional anatomy to get that same really nice aesthetics you get from a lab. And that only takes um a minute or two to do with a handpiece in your hand and yeah absolutely i can really i can say that i feel like i get um my work just as good as a lab it takes practice takes effort um but but no i i think it definitely rivals and equals a lab all right next question yeah absolutely and i i just want to comment most you know if you do zirconia it's a milled restoration whether it comes from a lab or uh you know, chair side. So it's the same material being milled, typically in the same type of method. Okay, so do you use IvoClean, which is an IvoClar product, which is out of Buffalo, New York? So you're watching the game. I think it's 7 7 right now. Or Z Prime uh, on Crown prior to cementing? Okay, yes, we have IvoClean on our office. And if I'm ever concerned with contamination, let's say I get some blood. Some tissue, absolutely. Um, Ivoclean, there's been many studies out there that um, it can help with your bond strengths. With these, the thing I'm most concerned about for retention purposes for zirconia is axial wall retention, right? If I'm just traditionally cementing, if I get that four to five millimeters of axial wall, that um, I found has been plenty of retention. It's when you get these really short crowns that, yeah, that's where you have to make that determination. Maybe I'd be better off bonding these um, or even doing an all porcelain, even though it's thin, but but you don't have enough axial wall for that mechanical retention. So as long as you're getting the mechanical retention you need, then um, I just traditionally cement it. That's perfect. Uh, question, do you ever stain to add some better shade matching before glazing or centering and going well. Yeah. So absolutely, you can stain and glaze the zirconia crowns. It is an extra step. Okay, so you center the zirconia. It comes out of the oven. You can add your stain and glaze. Then you have to refire it on a, on a glazing step. And I'm really only doing these materials that I'm showing you on my first and second molars. And so I am not as concerned about the staining and glazing being so far back back there. Trust me, I've been a big Emacs user forever. And if I really want just pure aesthetics, 
and I'm okay to, um, you know, lose strength, then I'll still do Emacs and do a real nice stain and glaze Emacs crown for that perfect aesthetic look. But uh, what you're gaining in strength, um, I really just like the longevity um, that, that I feel like zirconia crowns, these can be lifelong restorations where Emacs, they have their inherent weaknesses, especially for first and second molars. But can you do it? Yes. Just know you have to add a about eight minute stain and glaze cycle to it. Great. And I think they noticed here you had no hygiene checks or any other issues. Uh, what's your schedule look like during a crown prep? Hygiene patients, other doctor patients? Yes. Okay. So what does schedule look like during a crown prep hygiene patient, other doctor patients? So my, you'll notice once you start getting into the, the same day dentistry world, it's almost like a natural progression. Your team, my front desk, they start to know, hey, I know doctor is going to be available 30 minutes into the appointment because that's when the crown is going to be milling and going in the oven. So that's when they'll either double book me with a few fillings. Um, I'll have a case presentation put in there. They, I can always be double booked in that time that my assistant is getting the crown ready. So, so again, even though it's an hour crown appointment, that's not even an hour of my time. That's 15 minutes of the prep and then another uh, maybe three to five minutes for the design. I do like to be part of the design and then another five minutes to see. But that leaves a whole half hour for, of my time to be able to go to hygiene or do extra treatment. A lot of times patients have multiple treatments, fillings, other crowns. So, so I always make sure I get my crown to the oven and then I go back to the patient and start doing those fillings then. Perfect. So, um, the as far as, oh, yep. sorry. go ahead, Gary. You've got incredible team members at your office. So the question was, do assistants help with designing and finishing? Oh, absolutely. Hey, you can train anybody to do this. That's what's nice, I think, about one of the biggest advantage that CERC has is their workflow. It's uh, gotten very predictable, very user-friendly that anybody can learn. You just got to take the time to teach them. You got to take the time to learn yourself. But my, my assistants um, are very involved with this process. They know how to take off sprues. They know how to carve an anatomy. They know how to stain and glaze. They know how to polish. They even know how to design crowns. I always put my touch to it um, as, as the dentist to make sure that we're getting the quality that, that I want. Um, and that my patients come to expect, but absolutely, this is assistance should be involved. In fact, they have to be in order to to do this in an hour. Yeah, in fact, I know your team is uh, being educated to train other team members around the country, so that's wonderful. Yeah. Uh, oh, I, I didn't answer what what scenarios would I choose a lab? I guess I still yeah. use a lab in cases for sure. Um, if I Oh, you just got to look at it at your time. If I'm doing a full upper, lower, full mouth restoration case, could you do that all Sarek? Yes. And I've done it, but it's a lot of work. So in those cases, I'll absolutely still use a lab. Um, 10 unit veneer cases, um, I'm, I can use my lab. Can you do that with your Sarek? You can just know it, it does take some training, does take some extra work from taking it from the mill to carving in some line angles, anatomy, to get it the same kind of look you'd want in um, from what you get from a lab. Great. Final question, I think. When would you use biogeneric copy versus biogeneric individual? Yeah, great question. Um, so as a CEREC user, I've used biocopy for a long time. It was us That used to be my go-to. I would biocopy everything. Uh, for single unit crowns. Um, I still use biocopy in cases where there's a partial. I still use biocopy in just really f uh, funky occlusion or anatomy or just someone just has uniqueness to their smile. But I've actually found that the software has gotten so good that the initial proposal it gives me from, from a single unit crown, I, I like biogeneric individual now. I just let the CEREC give me the proposal. And um, like I said, it only usually takes two minutes, 
two, two and a half minutes to just make a few of those adjustments to where you can get that to the mill quickly. I know that's, that's after a lot of practice, I did have to challenge myself. I would set timers. I would say, Hey, take five minutes and just know you can always mill it and you can carve and, and make some additional changes with the handpiece, but just challenge yourself. Keep pushing yourself. But uh, yeah, I usually do individual now. Great. Final question, because we're a little bit over time and probably into the second quarter, but what isolation devices do you use? Cotton rolls, uh, other devices you like to use while scanning? Yeah, it's a great question. In fact, if you saw in the video, um, we used an isolite. So if anybody's familiar with the isolite, I love the isolite. It's always a sad day when the patient can't tolerate it or doesn't like it. Um, <laughs> know that's going to be a little bit longer procedure because you're dealing with the tongue and isolation and things. But um, I, I love my isolites. There are cases we still use a rubber dam. Um, definitely bonding, you want even better isolation. So if I'm doing bonding Emacs, for instance, or to Sarah, I will, I will always want to use either rubber dam or isolite, but I, I love the isolite. If you haven't used that, then um, you should look into it. And this weekend, I saw you use the OptorGate for some surgical procedures. Oh, yeah. The, most mm -hmm. of the anterior cases. You did. Anterior OptorGates. It's an Ivoclar. Um, it just keeps all the lip retracted out of the way. Use it on anything anterior. Um, those work great. OptorGates and Isolites. My best friends. <laughs> uh, I think we're good. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Good luck. Uh, feel free to message me, like I said, on Instagram. Thank you for that presentation. We did record it. So you get emails uh, this week, probably, about how you can see it again. Stop and pause and, and share with your team. That would be great. We do appreciate any feedback on future episodes of what you'd like to see. So there's a survey at the end of this. And we look forward to seeing you at the next webinar. Dr. Titan, sir, you've already... Uh, committed to a prime print one just on this webinar. So oh, yeah, there we go. to that one as well, because it's pretty yep. amazing technology shown at DS World this past weekend that will continue to change dentistry for the better. So thank you all very much for the night. Thank you, Dennis Blythe-Sorona, for supporting us, as well as Henry Schein. Have a good night. Good night.